What's going on YouTube? I am back again today with another chest, shoulders, and a brutal arms workout. So if you guys are ready to train, make sure you have got your game faces on. Today's workout is all about intensity. We're gonna be managing the loads that we're lifting whilst also minimizing the rest time that we have between exercises. So the idea being we wanna minimize rest periods to get more work in a shorter amount of time, essentially getting through more exercises in less time, whilst also maximizing the pump, so to speak. We wanna take advantage of getting a really big pump during today's session to make sure that we're doing everything we can to build muscle, because the best thing is, what works really well to build muscle also works very well to maintain it when dieting for fat loss. And right now, I'm running a mini cut, as you guys would know, by following along with the channel. So the intention is to maximize muscle retention. All of my workouts are focusing on increasing the total amount of training volume over time, whilst also getting through a reasonable calorie burn. However, that calorie burn is secondary to the loads that I'm lifting. So if you guys are ready, we're gonna hit a chest, shoulders, and a huge arms focused session. If you guys enjoy these videos, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because there are plenty more where this came from. So whenever I'm training chest or shoulders, I tend to start off by warming up my shoulder capsule in the same fashion as a video that I posted previously on the channel. I tend to make sure I run through certain ranges of motion just to make sure that my shoulders are moving as planned uh, before releasing my pec minor, just to make sure that I can actually incorporate a decent range of motion throughout the duration of my chest or shoulder workout. Often you'll find if you don't spend any time at all releasing your pecs before you begin training, you might actually struggle to bring the bar all the way down to your chest. And particularly when it comes to a movement like an incline bench press, which tends to incorporate a much larger range of motion, you'll find that it is seriously difficult to actually get the bar all the way down. So typically I'll run through that and then I get stuck into a quick set of just the bar. Again, this is just to get into the habit of performing the movement pattern correctly before I start to work up towards my working weight. Now typically the way that I go about this is in a pyramid fashion. I'll do the bar for sort of eight to 10 reps before adding weight. You see I jump to 60 kilos before 80 kilos. In each set, the reps that I do reduce in number. So we're kicking things off today by working up to sets of eight at an RIR of around two to three. Meaning every set we do, we wanna have at least two to three reps left in the tank before moving on to the second part of the superset. So when it comes to the incline bench press, I have the same grip on the bar as I would for a flat bench press. Now, if you're a power lifter or you are involved in regular strength training, this is gonna be super important because obviously we want any carryover that we get from the incline bench press to carry over straight to the flat bench press. Now, I'm touching quite high up on my chest as you'll see in just a moment. Typically, this is, I guess, a little bit closer to what you would know as a guillotine press. And the reason that I do this is simply to incorporate a greater range of motion and to put the chest under more stress. So by incorporating a larger range of motion, we're actually making the chest work harder. And you'll see that in comparison to a flat bench press, there is a really long way, essentially, to push the bar from my chest straight back up. Now, for the duration of the movement, I'm driving my legs into the floor. So both my toes and heels are pushing down into the floor, almost as if I'm trying to get my hips off the bench whilst I'm pressing. Now, what this does is creates a, a really stable place from which to push. So essentially, if our body is nice and tight and rigid, it means that as we go to push, there's not gonna be any force that gets absorbed by our body. We're gonna be able to push that bar as hard as possible each and every time we come down. So we're supersetting the incline bench press with a cable face pull. Now my favorite variation of this is, as you can see in the video, where I'm sitting down on the ground, the cable pulley is set to a very high position on the machine, and I'm actually using my body weight to anchor myself to the floor. Now, this might be a little bit more challenging if you get so strong that you can actually face pull more than your body weight, 
but in reality, your rear delts are quite small muscles, so it's unlikely that you'll actually find yourself in this position. So from here, when it comes to the pulley, we actually wanna make sure that we are pulling the cable directly towards our eyes. You'll see my elbows are flaring, which basically allows me to target my rear delts. It's not a rowing movement, it's almost a wide rowing movement. Uh, we are pulling back from the elbows rather than from the wrists. We wanna give every opportunity to our rear delts to actually perform the movement without any assistance from any other movements. My rib cage is tucked, which means that my abs and my core is engaged. And essentially that allows me to really isolate my rear delts. Typically you'll see a lot of people flare their rib cage and almost point their chest towards the ceiling in order to do this. But that is going to allow you to use much more momentum uh, and really struggle to actually target your rear delts. So try and keep your upper body as still as you possibly can whilst pulling back from your elbows. Imagine your hands are hooks in this situation. One of the best cues that I could recommend for any sort of rowing variation at all. Imagine your hands are hooks and you're pulling back from your elbows so that the actual muscles that we want to hit are doing all of the work. Now after each superset, we want to give ourselves around 30 seconds max before we head straight back into the other exercise, giving ourselves every opportunity to get through these five sets of each superset as quickly as possible and maintain a pretty reasonably high heart rate. Now from here, we're moving into one of my favorite chest exercises. One of my favorite exercises to do, particularly after any pressing movements, just to finish off my chest. This is a cable chest fly. Now you can see that I've set the pulleys to roughly the same height as my chest and I'm operating in the same plane of movement. I pull my shoulder blades back and down and as a consequence you'll see that as I bring my hands together I can only get them as close as the line of my shoulders. You'll see the front on angle in just a second whereby my hands can only become as close as my shoulder blades allow them to be. Now, the best part about this exercise and performing it in this manner is that it allows me to truly isolate my chest. I've heard of a lot of people feeling, so to speak, this exercise through their shoulders by pulling your shoulder blades back and down. So we're retracting and depressing our scapula. You can actually minimize any involvement of the shoulders whatsoever and really make your chest do all of the work. Now, it doesn't even look like I'm lifting that much weight, but because of this dual pulley cable system that we have, uh, I can assure you it's a lot heavier than it looks, but it also means that none of my shoulders are actually getting involved with this exercise. I've got a split stance for the duration of the movement, just so that I can better anchor myself to the ground and control my center of gravity and really allow my chest to do all the work. We're incorporating a three count negative. Again, there's a lot of research showing that eccentric loading, which is the loading that happens with gravity. So if you imagine the chest fly, I'm pulling the weights in towards the center of my chest. That is going against gravity. I'm having to lift the weights up on the weight stack. Whereas as I let my hands go back out, that is an eccentric movement whereby the weights are being controlled with the effects of gravity. There is a lot of research that suggests eccentric loading is absolutely brilliant for muscle damage uh, and ultimately hypertrophy as a consequence. So if you're looking to build or maintain muscle uh, when dieting, then it's probably in your best interest to incorporate some form of eccentric loading to really take advantage of the muscle building benefits of doing so. So we're supersetting that with a seated dumbbell shoulder press. And for comfort purposes, I really like to perform these on a bench that isn't sitting bolt upright. This bench would be at roughly an 80 degree incline, which just allows me to sit a little bit more comfortably without necessarily feeling as if the weights are gonna fall forward while I'm pressing them. Again, we've got the same sort of leg drive on the dumbbell shoulder press that we do with the incline bench press. My feet, my heels, and my toes are pressing hard into the ground to create a nice stable base from which to push. And you'll see I'm extending the dumbbells all the way above my head. I'm not quite locking my elbows simply because I wanna try and maintain the load that's in my hands uh, through my shoulders. When you tend to lock the joints at the elbows, 
The elbow joint itself is taking the weight, which means there is no weight or tension on the muscle itself. This is just one of those ways that you can think about creating more constant tension on the muscle, which is again, going to help with building muscle through more muscle damage, essentially making the muscle work harder than if you were to repeatedly take the tension off the muscle by locking your elbows. If you're new to dumbbell pressing, the best trick that I could suggest is to make sure that your elbows remain underneath your hands and wrists at all times. That will give you the best range of motion and the best movement pattern with which to press and you'll find that you don't ever feel as if you're going to lose control of the dumbbells. Okay, so we're halfway through the workout with arguably the most important half still to go. The really important part of this workout, or rather the really important thing to consider with this workout is that we never want to lose the pump. If you've been training for any length of time, you know that if you ever lose your pump, you're never going to get it back. Not the same day anyway. So now that we've finished chest and shoulders, we're going to go straight into arms. And we've got two brutal supersets, buys and tries, to round out proceedings. If you've got some intra workout BCAAs, now would be the time. Okay, so when I need to pick me up, I go for two scoops of amino energy. Now, amino energy has BCAAs as well as some caffeine in it, which is good for giving you a little bit of a kick up the pants when you're struggling halfway through a session. Now, there's a lot of research recently that has come out which would suggest that BCAAs aren't overly important in the presence of adequate protein consumption. So basically, if you're hitting your macros and you're getting enough protein, around a gram of protein per pound of body weight, probably not essential to have BCAAs as a supplement. But in this case, a bit of caffeine and it tastes brilliant, so I'm getting stuck in. So to finish off the workout, we're gonna run through a huge arm giant set. So what we've got here is four exercises being performed back to back. So we're beginning with an incline dumbbell bicep curl. And this is one of the exercises I see performed the most poorly of any in the gym. Now you'll see here, I'm incorporating plenty of control. My elbows remain very still throughout the movement and I'm ensuring that I'm doing everything I can to use only my biceps in curling the weight. One of the best ways you can ensure this happens is to keep your head pressed against the bench. I see a lot of people bring their head forward or rather they don't allow their head or neck to relax against the bench. And what this does is actually allows their elbows to track further backwards as a consequence, which basically negates the incline that you're trying to instill in the movement. So by keeping my head back, you'll actually see that my elbows can only shoot so far backwards, which means I can fully extend my triceps at the bottom and then create that huge amount of tension on the biceps as I bring the weights back up. So as soon as we're done with the seated dumbbell incline curl, we are moving straight into a standing dumbbell hammer curl. Now you'll see here again, I'm doing my best to keep my elbows as still as possible and isolate the biceps as best I can. Now for those of you that might struggle to feel this anywhere but your forearms, I would suggest that you think about popping your thumbs over the dumbbell with your fingers rather than the way that I've got my thumb underneath uh, essentially you know, forming a fist. Again, we're trying to negate all forms of momentum. You'll see that I'm getting a full extension at the elbow joint before bringing the weight back up. I'm getting a little squeeze at the top. No need to worry too much about this simply because squeezing is essentially contracting the muscle, which is what you're doing by actually curling the weight up. So focus on keeping those elbows as still as possible to really isolate the bicep before controlling the weight down as best you can. When you perform these standing or seated, you'll find that being in a seated position makes it even more difficult to incorporate any momentum whatsoever. So if you do do a lot of swinging typically, maybe try this one on a bench. From there, we're now getting our triceps involved with a dumbbell skull crusher. Now you'll see here, my elbows again are remaining as still as possible because essentially all we're trying to do here is isolate the triceps by incorporating extension and flexion at the elbow joint. So you'll see again that I'm controlling the weight down almost all the way to my shoulders before driving the weights back up as quickly as I possibly can. My elbows remain as still as possible throughout the movement and at the same time I'm driving my feet, again my heels and my toes, into the ground to try and keep my body as still as possible. 
When it comes to the position of the dumbbells in relation to your elbows, ideally we want to keep them operating within the same plane. So work really hard to ensure that your elbows aren't actually splaying out to the side and you're bringing those dumbbells down in line with your shoulders whilst keeping your elbows in a similar position. The final exercise of this giant set is a straight bar tricep pushdown. Now again, you'll see the emphasis here is on my elbows remaining very still, because again, in order to train the triceps, all we need to do is consider the movement at the elbow joint. Now I like to perform these with a slightly bent over position simply because as I get to the top, it's going to allow me to maintain a larger range of motion and essentially get a better stretch towards the top. From there, I'm pushing down and keeping my shoulders and my elbows in the same position. When you stand too upright during this movement, you'll find that as you push the bar all the way down to the bottom, and because the, the cable is so close to you, there's essentially no tension on the tricep. Whereas this way, because I'm bent over, because I'm leaning forward slightly, you'll see that as my triceps are at full lockout, there is still some tension and gravity pulling me forward or pulling my triceps back up into place, which makes it just a little bit more difficult. That brings this video to an end. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And as always, if you have any suggestions for video topics or anything you'd like to see specifically on the channel, please make sure to drop a comment below, tag a friend, do all of that good stuff. Don't forget, you can always download my free fat loss and muscle building guides via the link in the description section below, where you'll also find all of the relevant links to any references and journals that are linked in the video today. If you guys have any questions, any comments, please pop them down below. I'll make sure to respond to each and every one of them. Until next week, guys, I'll see you then.